A cloud lifter is a device that helps boost the signal from your microphone by adding 25 dB of gain before the signal even reaches your microphone preamp. More generally, a device like this is called an inline preamp, and there are actually several options available aside from the cloud lifter. In this video, I'm going to help you decide if you should use an inline preamp. We'll set up audio comparisons so that you can hear the difference. I'll ask you a few simple questions to help you determine if you need one. And at the end of the video, I'll introduce you to some other inline preamps that might just be better than the cloud lifter at a similar price. You can find links to all of the options in the description below, and using those links will help to support the channel at no extra cost to you. Let's get started. Let's get right into it. Do you need an inline preamp like a cloud lifter? To answer that question, I've got a few questions for you. First, what type of microphone are you using? Inline preamps aren't compatible with condenser microphones. So if you're using a condenser microphone, you can't use an inline preamp. If you're using a dynamic microphone or a ribbon microphone, you can use an inline preamp, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should use one. You may notice that when you turn the microphone preamp knob all the way up, you'll start to hear some noise. What you're hearing is the microphone preamp's self noise or inherent noise. One reason why you might want to use an inline preamp is to increase the level of the microphone signal before it reaches your microphone preamp. That way you won't need to turn the microphone preamp up so far and you'll save yourself from the excessive noise inherent to that preamp. One common misunderstanding about inline preamps like the cloud lifter is that they give you extra gain without any noise. And that's just not true. Don't get me wrong, the inherent noise of most inline preamps is extremely low, but that's also the case with most preamps sold today. For example, here's the noise level you get with just the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 preamp turned all the way up, compared with the noise level you get with the inline preamp and Focusrite Scarlett preamp turned down a bit to get the same signal level. There isn't much of a difference. If you're worried about noise, I'd recommend looking up the EIN and the technical specifications for your audio interface. If the EIN is minus 128 dBU or lower, an inline preamp probably won't significantly reduce the noise level of your recording. However, some microphone preamps out there are quite noisy. For example, the EIN of the Zoom H5 is only minus 120 dBU. At this point, we'll start to hear a significant difference between the noise you get from the Zoom H5 preamp compared to the inline preamp. The self noise of most modern preamps is very low, and it's rare that an inline preamp will be completely necessary based on noise levels alone. Still, there are some other reasons aside from noise that might make an inline preamp necessary. I believe the most common reason why someone might use an inline preamp is to compensate for a low sensitivity microphone or to simply get more gain than the preamp can provide on its own. The sensitivity of a microphone tells us how much voltage is created at a given pressure level. Some microphones are more efficient than others when it comes to converting pressure waves into electrical currents. For example, the sensitivity of the Shure SM58 is 1.85 millivolts at one Pascal, while the Shure SM7B only produces 1.12 millivolts at one Pascal. So the same pressure level into each of these microphones will result in a different signal level into your preamp. That means that the SM7B will require a bit more gain than the SM58. This is where the gain range of your microphone preamp becomes important. The gain range of the microphone preamps in my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 first gen is minus 4 dB to plus 46 dB. This article by Sure states that the SM7B should be used with a preamp that supplies at least 60 dB of gain which means that the first gen Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 falls short by 14 dB. The gain range of the most current third gen Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 is 56 dB, which is a bit closer to the recommended 60 dB, but still 4 dB short. In both of these cases, it would be beneficial to use an inline preamp to provide the extra gain to the signal chain. Pairing the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 third gen with a cloud lifter gives the system an extra 25 dB of gain resulting in a total of 71 dB, which is plenty for most microphones. On the other hand, my UA Apollo Twin interface has a gain range of plus 10 dB to plus 65 dB, so I probably don't need to use an inline preamp to provide the gain necessary for the Shure SM7B. Don't worry, I'll show you examples of all of these scenarios later in the video. 
First, there's one more detail we need to consider when deciding if you really need an inline preamp or not. The last detail that should be considered is the sound pressure level at the microphone. There are a few factors that play into this. First, how loud is the sound source? If you're putting the SM7B on a trumpet or a snare drum or a guitar amplifier, you probably don't need to worry about the gain range of your preamp. These are very loud instruments, and the stronger the signal is at the microphone, the less gain will be required by the mic pre. It's more likely that you'll be using the SM7B for vocals or spoken word, and a human voice is much quieter by nature. A person who projects their voice into the microphone at a strong level is less likely to need extra gain than someone with a very quiet speaking voice. Not only does the level of the sound source matter, but the distance from the sound source to the microphone also matters. With every doubling of distance between the source and the microphone, you'll see a 6 dB loss in level. Moving closer to the microphone will increase the level, but you'll also hear changes to the tonal balance of the signal due to the proximity effect. So if you're not able to get a good level between minus 18 and minus 12 dB full scale from about three inches away from the microphone, you probably need more powerful preamps or an inline preamp. Okay, let's do some tests. First, we'll plug the Shure SM7B directly in to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 with no inline preamp. Right now, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 preamp is turned all the way up. And as you can see, we're just getting the level that we want with peaks around minus 12 dB full scale and the average signal level sitting around minus 18 dB full scale. Let's go ahead and plug the cloud lifter in and see if we hear a noticeable difference. All right, now I've plugged in the cloud lifter in line here. So the cloud lifter is between the microphone and the input preamp. And now to get that same level with peaks around minus 12 dB full scale, the Focusrite Scarlett preamp is sitting at about three o'clock or so. So we've got quite a bit more headroom with the preamp now to turn it up if someone were speaking into the microphone a little bit more quietly. Okay, now we're using the same microphone, the SM7B, this time plugged into the Apollo Twin Mark II, which has a little bit larger of a gain range. So I can get an appropriate level even without a cloud lifter. We've still got about four notches until we've maxed out the capabilities of this preamp. Let's see what it sounds like with the cloud lifter in line. Okay, now we're listening to the SM7B with the cloud lifter plugged into the Apollo Twin Mark II, and the preamp on the Apollo Twin is turned up less than half of the way up. And as you can see, we're still getting levels with peaks at minus 12 dB full scale and an average signal level around minus 18 dB full scale. I'm about three inches away from the microphone. So it's the same outcome, pretty much. We're not driving the preamp as hard, so, though there may be some differences in the harmonic distortion, it's not absolutely necessary to have a cloud lifter if your preamp is powerful enough to supply the gain necessary for the mic you're using. If you've decided that you do in fact need an inline preamp, then you should know that there are more options available than just the cloud lifter. Don't get me wrong, the cloud lifter is a solid option, but other options like the Radial McBoost give you a bit more flexibility. With the Radial McBoost, I can actually fine tune the amount of gain using this knob. I really like having that extra bit of control. Other popular options include the Royer D-Booster and the Triton Fethead. I'll leave links to all of these options in the description below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and check out the video that's on your screen now. I'll see you there.